This week on Heart of Oak. You got a death wish? It's like a nice carpet. It's not break time yet. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lizzie. And I'm PJ. And we're Oak Development and Design. Just hang 1,800 pounds in the air. Hope we don't break it. We tear down and rebuild houses. High fives for taking houses down. From spec homes to custom renovations and design. Stop, you're bad at this. We save what we can. Rebuild what we can't. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to pay for it yet. It's not stressful. I'm not stressed. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. We do it all here in New England, where we call home. We don't just flip houses. We create homes. Heart of Oak is brought to you by Timberland Pro. Always do. Never done. Cam Appliance. Make your next appliance a Cam Appliance. Mid Cape Home Centers, serving building professionals for 125 years. Mountain One Bank, where banking is in our nature. All right, here we go. Maiden voyage. We're going to the Big Mass Tiny House Festival. We actually brought our tiny house to support the trailer company that we bought the trailer from. We bought the trailer from them to build a tiny house for our office, which you know, for me, my idea was I didn't want to have uh, a space in town that cost us a lot of money. I needed an office, and so I created a tiny house. And then here we are having it on display, and we've had a line all day. It's kind of crazy. It's exciting to see people love our tiny house. We'll have we to should see go check out our tiny house. We should go check out <laughs> our tiny house. So we bought the framing on the outside from these guys' tiny foundations. Oh, okay we gave them a schematic of what we wanted, mm -hmm. and then they came up with a framing plan, and we just bought the outside walls and roof from them. And the reason we did it is it's like 80% lighter than wood with the steel. It's a lot harder to work with. It's, it's definitely a learning curve. The first couple panels you put together are pretty tricky, but then you figure it out. Things are coming along, but the painters need a little convincing. It's just, it's just a, a look we're going for. Don't ask why. Uh, yeah, but it's gonna look really good matched. Trust me. That's exactly what this we want. Is, this has got some shame to it though, right? It will, but it's not gonna. Yeah. Yeah. Trust us. Just trust us on this one. Trust us, John. Trust the system. He doesn't trust us. He doesn't trust us. Aha! I bought this bottle opener for the tiny house for our beers months ago, and I couldn't find it. You open your beer, and it grabs a cap. It's been the key omen of finishing the tiny house. It's been missing. Yeah, so this is the restoration hardware vanity I got that I've been moving around six million times to Sunday, but we're finally installing it today. Watch your head, dude. I hate being tall. We'll have no highest comments today, please. That could have been worse. This sits on the wall, and then that hangs off of this. And so I need to screw this to the wall. So is this level? How's that look? The bubble says... Up on your side a little bit. A little more. OK, so now we've marked where the cleat's going to go, both center and the bottom of the cleat. Feel good about that? Feel great. Oh, yeah. I've got seven inches. Is it going to clear? Seven inches. Ooh. Just makes it, right? It's right on seven, yeah. Wow, great. OK. You got seven and an eighth one way. So I say we throw it on. If we're happy, I'll throw some more screws on us. What have we got to lose? There, PJ. Either we know what we're doing or we don't. <laughs> That's what I have for center, how's that? Beautiful. You can come back, actually. We have a vanity. Okay, last two weeks at the antique reno. Uh, so the driveway got done. Uh, Nielsen got the herringbone walkway wrapped up the other day. 
So really the outside comes down to loam and seed. So they're gonna top off some of the uh, topsoil, get it graded nice uh, by hand. And then at that point we'll hydro seed it. So in the next kind of three, four days, we're gonna have the outside of this get, you know, mostly wrapped. And then we're working toward getting our certificate of occupancy. Okay, so, you know, I was really thinking I wanted to paint this black, but now that I see it like this, it looks killer. Love it. This joint, I wanna fill. Okay. Now, the reason is, we had to oh. lift the whole center of the house three and a half inches. Oh, okay, yeah. And so, it looks perfectly level everywhere, but eventually it catches up with you. And when we put this crown up, you can see it going. You can see going down. You can see it. Oh, I can see it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The gap is wider here than. Yeah. Correct. And so we feel like if we fill this, this one channel yeah. with bondo or whatever, sand it out, then it'll help hide the fact that you see that. Oh, like see. your eye won't see it. Okay, so you can leave the rest of these where they are. Just yeah. Block that one. Just the top one. Or do you think once it's painted, you won't even notice? It? I think once it's painted, you probably won't even notice. Should we leave it? Yeah. It's, it's an old home. It's got a lot of charm to it. A couple changes have actually happened here. Bonnie, our buyer, doesn't have kids. So the question was, does she really need a dedicated breakfast nook in this corner? And we decided that, you know what? No, let's not take up the space. Let's not kind of set that as the actual designated use. So what she's going to do is a simple table and chairs in this corner. We're not building that now, which I'm fine with because that is one less thing for us to do. Uh, in the kitchen itself, it actually looks like a mess and looks like it needs a lot, but once you get rid of all this stuff, it's pretty much done. The cabinets are in, countertop, our MSI quartz uh, Laza is in. The only thing we have left is we have a really cool freestanding chimney hood by GE Cafe going up. We've got our GE Cafe uh, range and dishwasher and fridge all here ready to roll. Um, I think Jim is throwing plug in back here which is why that's out but there he is now hey. Jimmy What's going on? welcome say hello to the world hello world what are you almost doing there. almost uh, there some extra plates uh, cable plates and do you see the fixture up there I haven't been up there yet oh yeah look at that thing I don't know not much to say this is pretty much wrapped up this is done Let's keep going all right, this room is mostly wrapped up. I know we had some issues. It's fixed and it works. Yo. I think I broke it. Don't tell anybody. From the beginning of this project, we wanted to create a home that was modern and comfortable, but still kept the home's original antique character. I think we crushed it. Less than two weeks to go. Woken up by two kids all night, so I'm a little groggy. So we gotta get this down as quick as possible because we don't want the heat to hit it. It's time for landscaping so we can make Metal Arc look its best for the listing. Then the question is, what color? All right, this is when you ask your wife. I go white. White? Definitely. It looks like there's two different species here. There's like, are these different? So there's this type, and then there's this type. I forget what the difference is. There is a difference, so. Well, the problem is, I think they're a lot more money. Let's see. They're not that much more money. They're 60 bucks Peach. a piece. Peach, 60 bucks. 60 bucks a piece? Yeah. What do you, how many do you think we need? Probably have to have three to four feet in between them. Three feet. So I'm gonna guess we need three on one side and four or five on the other. That's a nice tree. Look at that. I have to be wicked careful doing this now. See this guy? Oh, get, get out of there, PJ. Yeah, that guy right you, there. You, you shouldn't even be in there right now. I know, I just found out I'm allergic to these. An experience I don't want to repeat. We got our load, it's amazing how much we fit back there. I don't know. Missed my partner in crime. Lizzie loves gardening. Plants going in tomorrow. Landscapers are here. 
They've got us prepped for sod. We're gonna roll the sod tomorrow morning ourselves. Meadowlark is getting listed next week. Just woken up by two kids all night, so I'm a little groggy. Exciting day. We are putting down sod and plants today, and we are going to absolutely crush 3,500 square feet of sod and all those plants by about 10 o'clock. So uh, the deal with sod is that they drop that stuff at like four in the morning because they really want you to get that down and watered as fast as possible. So <clears throat> before the sun gets high and hot and it's gonna be 95 degrees today. So we need to get that stuff down as early as possible. So we're uh, making big strides here again toward that listing day next week. I tried to beat them, but Tuckahoe turf wrapped up before I got there. So sod is essentially a carpet. So you've got about half inch of dirt, which is your root system, right? And that's what ends up getting adapted to the ground and, and the loam that we put down. So even though we're not putting new seed down, right? You still wanna put a starter fertilizer down to help it with that initial kind of growth spurt at the beginning. So we'll put starter fertilizer on everything pretty heavy, I think. All right, so we got our fertilizer down. I'm sure they make a specific tool for this. But that's it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you put sod down. It's that easy. Don't let anybody fool you. What up? Nothing like a bit of early morning grass to start your day, huh? Oh yeah. Wow. The guy who dropped off actually gave me some good tips, which I never knew. He said we should do the border first. Okay. Because if you piece small pieces on the edge, they Tend burn up, which we've experienced. Tips of the turf. Tips of the turf. So we gotta get this down as quick as possible because we don't want the heat to hit it. Hey! I need my knife. Here's what I need. So satisfying. I know. Good. Yeah, it's crazy how dry this stuff's already getting. It's only been here for an hour. It's like a nice carpet. It's not break time yet. Ah! <laughs> Did I mention that it was the hottest day of the summer? Whew. Just got a nice whiff of that porta potty. <laughs> I wish I needed some sod at my house right now because we're gonna have some left over. Most sophisticated straight edge on the planet right there. Now we're close enough to a hospital. You drive fast, you used to race cars. And then drink an ice cold beer and you're all set. Hey, Jara. I think we'll wrap up the grass and jump right into digging holes and get those things right in. Uh-oh. Fired. Jerry, I got you a present. Thanks, man. That means a lot to me. One more right there, right? Right there? You gotta duck down a little bit, too. Yeah, a little lower, a little lower. There you go. <laughs> Your thermostat's right here, too. <laughs> One job at a time, please. Digging up something. There was like 20 bees within five feet. And I was like, I'm <laughs> out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Back it up. And I don't have my EpiPens with me. Oh, that's real smart of you. You got a death wish? No, nah, we're close enough to a hospital. You drive fast, you used to race cars. Challenge accepted. Just don't die. When rushing to the hospital with somebody in anaphylactic shock, 
it's legal to drift. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that once before. Drifting or anaphylactic shock? Driving someone to the hospital flat out. All right, so we throw a little peat moss in the hole. What the peat moss does is helps the plant retain moisture and grows better. Hydrangeas love water. A little plant food. So dirty little secret is that landscapers like to upcharge all their plants, which rightfully so they should, because everybody, we're not in this as a hobby. We're all here to make money. But if I can buy the plants myself and put them in myself and save a couple grand, then that's a no-brainer. You know the best trick to planting hydrangeas? Having someone else dig your holes. Yeah? Just a heads up, I mean, you're probably not allergic to bees as well, but there's a ton of bees enjoying the flowers right now. I'm less worried about bees, I'm very nervous about wasps. Because that's what bit me. Oh, honeybee. I feel like that's a country song. You could turn it into a country song. Add something about a dog, something about a truck, <laughs> something about a girlfriend. Chainsaw somewhere in there. And then drink an ice cold beer and you're all set. Busy day today. We've got all the sod down. We got the plants in. Jared's digging the last couple of holes. I'm gonna follow him and plant those over there. And he is right. It is really nice having someone else dig the holes. It would be much easier if we hired people to do this, wouldn't it? Yeah, but way more expensive, right? Way more expensive. Here, you can have this one. Thanks, baby. It's a good look. Hey, Jara. This looks pretty sweet. Yeah. I think that's a wrap. We've got. Everything done we needed to. It's about 12 o'clock. We got the sprinklers going. Guys just showed up with the skid steer. They're gonna start working on the driveway. And I think by, whoa, just got hit. I think by the end of the day, this place on the outside is gonna look perfect. And then you're using the bag here, kind of like a baker. Yeah, it's like a bakery bag. She said it's what all the cool kids use. So I guess we have to use it. Squirrel Hill, our giant property with the barn turned farmhouse kitchen, is ready for some serious hardscaping, cabinets, and appliances. Okay, so we're here with Nielsen today, and he is filling the gaps of the Belgian block. Yes, um, I'm adding um, a Portland with a mortar uh, mix, and we're going to be grouting uh, the cobblestone. So basically, a lot of guys use a like a pneumatic sand, right? Yes. And here, and, and I've found in the past that it doesn't last very long, and I'm, I've been unhappy with that finish. So when you suggested the mortar? Yes, the mortar, and also we had an acrylic fortifier. Which Give it what, a makes water it? resistance, yes, and actually a lot stronger. We're mixing Portland cement. With a probe masonry mortar. Yeah, and then you're using the bag here, kind of like a baker. Yes, it's like a bakery bag. So now you, you squeeze it in, let it set up for let a little while. Let it set while. up a little bit, and uh, I go around and I'll uh, tuck point it. Yep. And at the end of that process, I let it set up a little, then I, I'll sponge it and uh, clean it up. Nice. And so this, this bag, you're basically just squeezy it in all along, just like a baker does with a just cake. Just like the baker, yes. That's so cool. Maybe I'll try it. Consistency has to be key here, because if it's not, if it doesn't have enough liquid in it, it's not gonna go through the bag, right? Yes. You wanna give it a shot? Yeah, I wanna give it a shot. Yes, give it a little squeeze, a little elbow grease, and you're all set. It's a good forearm workout. It's pretty easy, actually. What you can do is squeeze the bag as you go. Yep. Give it a little twist at the ends. Yep. And you fill it up. There you go. That's how it's done, how right it's there. Done. Crushed it. And so this will be dry and able to drive on tomorrow. Tomorrow. Awesome. That looks awesome. All right, so we're here with Joran from Elements Concrete. And you're gonna template today. We're gonna template today. And then basically you're just gonna create a template, yep. glue it all together so that you know exactly what you're doing. Yep. Bring it back to your shop, build your form. Yep. Mix up your uh, secret like formula, secret formula and, and go for it. And then, yep. Just and then you guys got some countertops. Yeah, that easy. It. It's that it's easy. It's magic. Uh, just be aware that that sink is almost five thousand dollars. So, <laughs> something I don't need to own. Concrete countertops are like an art form. Every single one is unique and different, 
and there's a lot about it that you can't control. So you have to have a lot of trust in the vision and the execution. What we did here with the window is we kept the sill low yeah. so that the countertop actually goes in and acts as a window sill. So a lot of times in kitchens, they'll have the, the window kind of up high and there'll be backsplash underneath it. And I, I personally don't love the way that looks. And I also don't love the fact that you lose that counter space. So for me, building the box out, it made a lot of sense to go all the way in. It just makes it feel that much bigger. Whitewood needs the hood and microwave to get the kitchen in, so I'm off to cam appliance. Oh man, nice to see we need appliances, let's yeah. do this. Let's do it. So that's our hood for Squirrel Hill. Just don't, just don't trip. We can tiptoe over this. You can just go on the other side of the island there. Uh, right here is fine. On the ship lap like that, it looks fantastic. Nice work. Love it. In this project, we decided to go with just a really kind of classy, simple crown. It's what Gail from Whitewood calls, uh, she said it's what all the cool kids use, so I guess we have to use it because it's all the cool kids using it. So one of the ways I always judge uh, an install of a kitchen is the farmer sink because it's one of the trickier things to put in. And if you notice how clean that cut is right there, that's what we're looking for. It's little things like this that to me make a big difference. You know, the other thing that's kind of cool with this kitchen, obviously it's in a barn and it looks awesome, but uh, I started putting two trash bins in, and everybody thinks I'm crazy, but I can't stand emptying the trash bin. And when you have one, you always have like recycling piling over. So what I do now is I put two in, and one is for recycling. Actually, three bins could be for recycling, and one could be for trash, because I know in our household, for every bag of trash, we have at least two or three bags of recycling. So now, you limit how many times you have to Bring the trash out. Next week on Heart of Oak. So we've been throwing a curveball. The problem is we're gonna be left with a house that's not done. You gotta get it done, you gotta get Elmer. Come on it. Guys, what are we getting? Coffee. We have our children trained. Jackie, coffee? You want coffee? Yeah. <laughs>